Today we're going to do something a little different. Um, this is a really nice captive raised specimen of Actius rotonuma. It's a Luna moth from uh, Southeast Asia, Vietnam, probably other countries there. Um, these have not been commonly available. Um, I have purchased a couple b uh, pretty poor condition specimens. Few of them were being raised. Uh, it's not something that was commonly available. And more recently now these are starting to be bred in captivity so they become more available and the price has come down. This is one way that these insects are preserved and shipped. Uh, this is called a Riker mount. And it's just a box with a plastic uh, window on it. Sometimes they're glass. And it's just cardboard with some, you know, cotton or something to hold the specimen. And I guess it's a good way to keep them safe. And you could hang it on your wall if you wanted to. But of course, my teaching collection is all pin specimens, and I prefer to do it that way. Also, uh, it's not a bad mount, but um, there's a little more space here between the uh, wings than I prefer. I, I would have these hind wings just slightly lower. Um, so I'm considering repositioning the wings. Now this is risky because you always risk damaging the specimen. The bodies on these Saturnid moths are very furry and this one is in really good condition. It's a you know, really good captive race specimen so it's not smashed, just the fur is not matted, it's all intact. And I'm going to have to put a pin through it. You can see there's a little pinhole here. Um, but um, th that might be a little tricky too. So I am taking some risks in remounting this specimen, but it, it'll make me crazy if I don't. I also have um, a specimen of a phasmid stick bug, and um, this one is also uh, not common. Um, they tend to be a little bit expensive. My understanding and the research I had done in the past was that this is a species of stick insect that was not being captive raised, as many stick insects are, so it just made them hard to get. And the bright yellow wings, it's really attractive. I have one in my teaching collection, but it's badly faded and not in good condition. Now, this one also, Riker mount, and this is pretty typical how the legs are placed and the antennas are kind of arched. And uh, it, in my collection, I like to have the specimens looking in a more natural pose. You wouldn't see one like this with the legs stretched out like that. So I'm going to remount this one, which these are pretty sturdy, so I'm not concerned about that at all. Uh, so today I'm going to um, go through the steps on how to do that. I think I'm going to start with this one just because it's less fragile. These Riker mounts are held together with a big stainless steel pin. It's kind of like a nail. And uh, you can pull these out. And then the lid should come off. And these are dried, uh, as all these insect specimens are, so they're a bit fragile. You want to be gentle with them. Okay. Yeah, it's really a nice one. Now I have my relaxing box here. I have some wet paper towel on the bottom, some foil to keep the specimen off the towel. And I'm going to put these in here for a while and uh, let them soften up. They will rehydrate with the moisture that's in there. I'm just going to take a pair of tweezers and try and lift this one up here. Hopefully it won't be too stuck to the fibers. A little bit. Oh, there we go. And you can see underside, this one's been cut along the whole length and the gut removed, which is good. It keeps it uh, from discoloring and rotting. Overall, that's uh, in really good condition. The uh, wings have sort of a fan, you know, uh, structure so that they can fold up. And my only complaint about these is these wings have been smashed out pretty flat, so you can't really see the uh, the, the fan structure. If it's a fresh specimen and you pull it out, it has these little folds that I kind of like. But I'm not going to complain. It's a good specimen. So I'm just going to actually just set this in here. <coughs> and uh, 
and let that sit for a while. And I might want to inject some water into it or spray some water onto it or something at some point. But I think for now I'm just going to let it rehumidify here. Okay, and now we go to the to the delicate one. This is always a little nerve-wracking when I get a specimen that means a lot to me and I'm going to mess with it because there's always a potential of I'm mucking it up and I don't want to do that. The box is really tight. There we go. I think I, I, I'm especially fond of Luna moths. I always have been since I was a kid. They're probably my favorite bug. And this one is just so beautiful. It's not just that it's uncommon uh, that makes it value to me, but just the color, the pink and the sort of green gold and the lines and, and the sort of uh, falsate wing tips and it's just beautiful. I'd say this one's a little, a little bit small, uh, a little smaller than the others that I've seen. But being captive raised specimens, that's not uh, that much of a surprise. Sometimes they're being raised on maybe less than optimal food plant or something, but I'm not going to question it. It's a nice, fresh specimen. Okay, this is pretty loose. It's coming up nicely. I'm going to just gently lift it. This is nerve wracking. And then set it. Okay, good. Put the lid on and seal it up so I can get some humidity in there. And then uh, I'll be checking on this uh, in a few hours. I'm imagining it's going to probably take a day for it to soften up enough. Now it's been a day since this has been sitting closed up and the moth has softened up. I can actually move the wings a little bit, so this is ready to pin. The stick insect is still pretty stiff. The wings have softened up, but the legs are still pretty stiff, so I'm going to have to put a little water on that before I try to pin it. The moth is ready to go, so I'm going to try and delicately pin this without messing it up. The hairs on the body and the scales on the wings on these moths are very fragile. They come off very easily and uh, so it's easy to just smudge it by touching it. Most of the butterflies, some of the other moths, the scales are much more firmly attached. You can touch the wing and it won't leave a fingerprint, but these got to be really, really careful. So first I'm going to lift this out of here and set it on a spreading board spreading board here. Just set it there for now. But for something valuable like this, I like to use uh, stainless steel. They're, they're a bit more expensive than a standard pin, but they're shiny. They won't rust. Um, softer, so they're more flexible. I'm going to make sure I get a three. I only have threes and ones. Yeah, this is a three here. Yeah. All right, so that's going to be the center pin. Now, I can see where this moth was pinned before. It's a bit low here on the on the thorax. The pin was through right there. I want to go right through the center. I always find that uh, centering always gets the best results. Okay, I'm going to have to concentrate. I want the pin straight up and down and this way. I want it straight through the middle as possible. Um, I think I might set this on my hand. That'll give me more control over it. All right, now I've got to concentrate. through the top part. Get it nice and straight. It's a little crooked. 
you can always tell when it comes out right through the center on the bottom. This pin is tilted a little bit, which is not good. It's tilted forward. Now I need to pull it out without damaging the hairs on the thorax. It's going to be a challenge. I'll use my skinny little tweezers here. I'm going to pull it back out a little bit. There we go. Okay, that looks good. See, look at the hairs that have come off on my thumb from underneath. A little bit crooked side to side. This is nerve wracking. Okay, good. Got it through the middle. Am I sure? Yep. Okay. Now I have to get the pin pushed in straight. And this one's stainless steel, so it's a little flexible. That looks really straight. Okay. Oh yeah. To brace the abdomen so it doesn't move. And I have my sheet of glassine. I've pre-cut this. I think that's going to be about right. I want to hold the wings down, but these tails down here are folded. They have uh, a little sort of spiral on them and I don't want to smash that with the uh, with the glassine. It's very it's very nice looking. It's very beautiful. I want to leave that. It's natural. Um, normally we bring the hind wings, the, the fore wings, straight up so the lower part of the fore wing is perpendicular. Uh, and with these Luna Maws, I think they look a little better if they're not quite so high. So I'm going to play around with this a little bit. First of all, I think this piece of glassine is too long, but we'll see how we'll see how this works out. All right, so I'm going to raise this four wing a little bit. I'm going to go with that. I'm holding the wing down the paper. And I've got some glass head pins here which are good for this. The moth is a little bit high on the pin so I'm going to move it down just a hair. Oh, there we go. And I can see if this paper is straight by looking at the margin here, right along here. I want that nice and straight. Okay, that looks good. I don't want to smash that, so I'm going to fold this up. Actually, I'm going to whack it off, I think. Yeah. Now I'm going to figure out where I want the hind wing to match up <coughs> with the upper wing. I don't know. That actually looks pretty good. I want a little bit of a wedge in there, but not too much. Bring it up a hair, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, there's a line that comes down right here, so it can sort of meet the other line. Yeah, I'll do that. And I can always adjust it if I need to. Put a pin right at that junction. And then I'm going to put a pin to prop this up so that it doesn't touch that tail tip that's got a nice swirl on it. Okay, let's see how do I think of that. Hmm, I think it's good. All right, I'm going to flip around to the other side. So 
I can figure out what I need to do with this. Whack it off. And then pull this four wing up. Double check and make sure that's good. Okay. Bring the four wing up so that it lines up right there. Put a pin in to hold it. Another one by the tip. Okay. Now I'm going to grab the lower wing. Pull it up in the same position. It's always a little tricky if you get this wrong. It just looks weird. I'm going to see how that looks. It might be slightly different than the other one. Okay, we'll spin it around, have a look. You can also get a clue here. When you have it all centered, then it works a lot better. The distance from the tip of the wing to here should be pretty close to the distance of the tip of the wing here. And it really is, it's right on. So I don't think I can do any better. Now I'm going to pull this pin here that I used to brace the abdomen. And I'm going to get another one and raise that abdomen up just a little bit because it's kind of drooping. I want it sticking out nice and straight. Yeah, and then we'll have a look at the antennae and make sure they look symmetrical. Oh, they look pretty good. I even need to mess with those. Maybe a little bit here. Nah. Good enough. All right. So, I think we're good with that. Now, this uh, thick insect is still a little too dry. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over on its back. And I've got a spray bottle here with some water, and I'm just going to spray a little bit of water on the on the legs, and that'll speed it along a little bit. So I'm let that sit for maybe a couple of hours, and then when that's soft enough, we'll pin that up.